I'm gonna be one of those really annoying and super extra people on the plane. Okay, looking back at the footage, it looks like I'm wearing a bra, but I'm wearing my jumpsuit from Uniqlo. I I'm wearing clothes. It's just, it just looks like this. <laughs> These are the things that I'm packing in my travel makeup bag, as well as my travel makeup carry-on bag. And I want to keep everything as simple as possible. And I also don't want to get stopped by TSA. Now time for the carry-on bag. I usually don't wear makeup on the plane. If it's a very short flight or if I have to go right into work right after, I'll have makeup on and guaranteed on the plane, I'll grow a massive ass pimple, walk out of the plane and it's just like huge throbbing cystic pimples. No matter how self-conscious I may feel, I refuse to wear makeup. This is going to be a 13 hour flight and I'm like, hell, Hell no. Hopefully I'll end up on the other side with even better skin. We gotta keep a good base. I brought these for my mom as well. I brought sheet masks. This one is a puffy eliminating mineral mask. This Innisfree green tea mask is also good for antioxidants and brightening and some moisturizing. These masks are maybe more for fun and more for placebo effect, but for actually moisturizing my face, I brought my Cosrx overnight moisturizing mask. It's a gel mask, so then I'll pile this on my face when I first get on the plane. This was made from natural beeswax, and I think the best part is, you know when the fans, when people turn on the fans on the plane and it's blowing in your face and you can't stop it, but you could just feel your skin get tighter and tighter? This is gonna help prevent that. For my lips, which have been acting up a lot lately, I think I have this weird reaction on my top lip this has been my savior. The amount that I put on my lips is nearly to the point of ingesting it like a snack. I also brought the Glossier Rosebomb.com. And before we get off the plane, I'll probably do a quick wash with water and then put on my serums. I have my vitamin C serum from Kiehl's. And then my also all-time favorite is the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. I don't know how it will act in the heat, and I don't know if it'll be too heavy for the summer. In terms of the texture of the cream, it's very easy to spread, so I could just use a little less and then, you know, distribute it over my face. In the wintertime, I layer it like crazy, and it's very buildable. This is my carry-on makeup case. I just got it. I was at an Air Canada event. In the case included, they had earplugs, which I desperately will need, even if I'm sleeping in the hotel room. I'm a very light sleeper. I have pretty terrible sleep in general when I'm traveling. An eye mask, pretty important. It comes with a little set of floss kit, a tiny tube of toothpaste, and a toothbrush. And it has a tiny tube of hand cream. And then on the plane, and also if I have any spot treatment that I need, I have this Acne Pimple Master Patch, which is just a hydrocolloid sticker for your pimples. It's best when it comes to a head, but really this is the best thing for me. If I'm sitting on a plane, I have nothing to do, and I have to wait for 13 hours, I'm going to be picking at my face, and I have a really bad picking problem. Normally I'll have spot treatment that's very visible, but this is very invisible, so it'll be doing its work very sneakily. Let's get started on the travel makeup bag. So to start off, I guess I'll do my base. And base, sunscreen is really important. I know Hong Kong tends to be very smoggy, but either way, UVA and UVB rays can still get through. So I have a primer sunscreen all-in-one. This is one of my holy grail primers. This is the Shu Uimur primer with SPF 50. The only thing that I remember about Hong Kong is that you walk out the door and you feel every single pore just plug up. And then you walk inside, and then you feel a huge blast of air conditioning. For foundation, I really don't wanna be wearing foundation. Ideally, I would just do spot treatments. One, because that'll speed up my routine, and then another thing is that I'll be traveling all day. I don't want, I just want everything to be minimal and not caked on. But this is the Maybelline 24 hour foundation. This shit is full coverage. Like, I think I could even use this as concealer. It's really, really heavy duty. They say that it's breathable and wearable, that it's oil-free and it's long-lasting. I haven't fully tested it. Plus, I haven't fully tested it in humid 30-something degree weather. This will be a great base for me to mix in with other moisturizers. So if I want to go lighter, I can make a tinted moisturizer. Or if I want to use it as concealer, I can just use it as a spot treatment. But just in case that doesn't work out, I still brought 
my tried and true NYX concealer, which is a cream concealer, full coverage, hasn't failed me at all, and it's small, so it's easy to throw in the suitcase. And then just to finish off my powder foundation, I have this Vichy powder that I still need to use up. I wish that I had something that was one palette in terms of cheek and bronzer. I have the Cover FX, but this is a talc-free bronzer, so I think it'll be really good about keeping my pores clear. I, you, There's a pattern here. This is the NARS 4 Play palette, and it has multiple colors. The two small pinks on the side are very pigmented, and I usually actually use those as eyeshadow. And then there's the cheek blush here. This is the Fenty Dupe Gold Highlight that's also very easy to just swish on. If I wanted a highlight, I have this. Out of all the Bite Prismatic Multi Sticks, this one is probably the one that I use the most and the one that I go to the most is the one Blush Pearl. The only eyeshadow palette, you guys are going to be so proud of me, the only eyeshadow palette that I'm bringing, let me explain myself. This is actually easier for me to use than a neutral eyeshadow palette. If I had a neutral eyeshadow palette, I ended up not just wearing, not wearing any eyeshadow at all. And I'm usually a one eyeshadow kind of person, so on the day that I'm wearing a certain color, I'll go for one of these colors. Swipe that on my lid, easy to go, and then I'm out. These are mostly all matte shades, so then I'll use my Bite Blush Pearl, and I'll use that if I want to add any glitter to my eyes. I have one brush case. I don't even think I need to bring the brush case because this is it. These are all my brushes. Plus an eyeliner, liquid eyeliner, tweezers, I need that. And then this really, really soft kabuki brush, that's for my foundation. I really don't want to bring a beauty blender because beauty blenders involve getting it wet and then if I have to throw it back in my bag and then go somewhere else, that means I have a wet beauty blender sitting in my makeup bag creating bacteria. It's just really not a good idea. And then this will be my cheek brush. Even at home, I don't usually separate my bronzer and my blush brush. What I'll do is I'll pinch my blush brush like this and then use it as a contour. And then I'll get into the blush. I'll just hit my cheekbones with the remainder of product and it actually tends to blend really well because it ends up being a little bit of a mix of bronzer and blush. Eyeshadow, I have this dual ended. It's actually a concealer brush. This end is great for a concentrated swipe of color and then the fluffy end is great for blending it out in the crease area. Eyelash curler is a necessity. I'm hoping to go for a lash lift before I leave. I've never tried lash extensions. I don't think I need it, but I've tried a lash lift before. Like years and years ago, it used to be called a lash perm. It was amazing. Saved me so much time, lasted me forever. I'd do it again before I leave because actually curling my eyelashes take a very long time. The mascara that I use is the Benefit Bad Gal Bang, but in terms of keeping it waterproof, I need to have my NYX Proof It waterproofing mascara. I think I'm almost done this bottle. I might need to stock up before I leave. For brows, I always use Benefit and usually I have the Browsings, which is a palette. I'm going to try using the Cabral this time. It is a brush built in to a pot. For lip stuff, I'm only bringing three lipsticks. That's it. I'm not bringing any brights. I'm not bringing any dark, nothing dramatic. I'm only bringing three neutral lipsticks. This peach MAC one called Kinda Sexy is a perfect peach neutral. And then my taupe, slightly different one is my Bite Thistle lipstick. And then when I wanna be a little girlier or I wanna be fun, I have this really fun Laneige two-tone lipstick. It has that ombre lip look. And then I have two giant liquids that I'm going to be packing into the suitcase with me. I have my oil cleanser, which is Shu Uemura. The great thing about this bottle is that there's a lock function so that if I throw it in my suitcase, I'm, I'm safe, which is, I think, very important. I would not want to get oil anywhere. Usually what I do is like I wrap a bunch of tape around any pump bottles and then I put a bag over it, but it's very convenient. This one I'm just going to throw into my bag. And then this brand new gel cleanser that I haven't opened yet is my favorite, also holy grail, low pH Kosar X. This one is great to use in the morning and then after my oil cleanse at night. It's still in the packaging, so nothing's gonna leak anywhere for now. Once I open it, I think I'll have to wrap it up, but cleansers are really, really important to me. That's it for my travel beauty essentials. If you guys have things that you love to travel with that you cannot live without, 
especially skincare stuff, let me know. Because some of these things I'm trying for the first time in hot, humid weather. And hopefully I'll pick up some cool Asian skincare stuff while I'm overseas. Be sure to give it a big thumbs up if you like these kind of videos so that I know to make more of these. And also stay tuned for my upcoming vlogs as well as all my beautiful Instagram posts, what I'm wearing in Asia. So I will see you guys next time. Bye!